Hello and welcome to this episode of Life with Lizzie Lee, powered by the China Project. I'm your host, Lizzie. Joining me today is Dr. Jennifer Bowie. She is the chair of the Department of International Health at Georgetown University. Thank you so much, Professor Bowie, for joining me today. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you for inviting me. Great to see you so, today. So, Professor Bowie, Beijing's abrupt relaxation of pandemic controls really surprised many experts I talked to. What do you think are the reasons behind Beijing's sudden change in direction? Yeah, well, as an epidemiologist, I usually think uh, of any epidemic or pandemic through this triad framework. Uh, so it's the agent, that's the virus, uh, the host, that's the susceptible population, and of course, the environment. I think in this case, um, the critical factor is the virus, um, because the Omicron uh, variant is um, so uh, transmissible. Uh, so even though the dynamic zero uh, COVID policy worked for the alpha and the original strain alpha and delta, it really cannot stop the spread of the Omicron. And of course, uh, if we use very strict uh, the uh, MPI, the non-pharmaceutical intervention, that's including lockdown uh, and other effects that also cause a lot of suffering, uh, social suffering, as well as uh, smothering the, uh, the growth of the the uh, eco economy and technology and so on. Right. And epi uh, epidemiologists are quite concerned with China's relatively low vaccination rate, especially among the elderly, as well as the imbalance of its medical resources. Are these concerns still valid now? What can the government do to mitigate the risk of unleashing another deadly wave of infection uh, later this year? Yes. Um, again, you know, uh, the back to the triad model, if the virus becomes stronger, then uh, the, the idea is that you need to in increase the immunity of the susceptible population or change the environment, right? So the, uh, the one way to increase the, the immunity of the population, of course, is a natural uh, infection, but the other one, um, much safer one, is the vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have seen that at least at the data to, uh, to this March in the spring uh, in China, the most vulnerable population, that's the elders, that's over 60 years old, over 65 year old, especially those who are over 80 years old, their vaccination rate is still pretty low. I think the uh, the, especially the booster rate is extremely low. Uh, and we have seen that for vaccine, the China's vaccine are uh, pretty good, but uh, it uh, seems the, uh, the immunity uh, come down pretty fast. Uh, so only when they people get a booster, then they can get a similar uh, protection as other vaccines. So that's very concerning. Uh, so the vaccine rate, uh, the low vaccine rate among the elders is the most uh, critical problem now. Yeah. Right, right. And of course, the real question is how many severe cases and COVID-related deaths there will be, not just the case number itself. What's the best research on this front? I've heard, you know, multiple estimates that are not exactly consistent with each other. What's the ballpark number of, um, you know, potential death? Yeah, so that's always a difficult part, right, for prediction, uh, especially with a, a pandemic that's uh, the determinants, it's multi um um, uh, factors. Uh, so it's hard to bring all these moving parts together to give a, a, a good estimation. Um, I would say the modeling nowadays, I think if anything, the mathematical modeling uh, with uh, disease, the understanding of the disease now uh, probably is the best uh, mm -hmm. bet uh, that can bring all different factors together. Uh, so uh, in July on the Nature Medicine, uh, there's an article coming out of the uh, Fudan University, I found that's a really nice, really good study. And it uh, predicted uh, that based on the Shanghai uh, wave uh, epidemic outbreak in the spring, uh, based on those data and calibrate the model with that data, it shows probably there will be about 1.5 million uh, deaths if it continues uh, for another six months. Um, so uh, I think that's a very, uh, very um, uh, disappointing, of course, uh, the, the problem. Uh, so the, that model is based on that there's no treatment and uh, there's 5 million uh, dosage uh, booster per, per day, 
I think. Uh, so that's still uh, causing this uh, large scale of, of deaths. So I think the uh, the future is uh, very severe. Um, and yeah, yeah, I will right. stop here. Right. Thank you so much. That's really helpful to know. Um, some virologists also worry that the virus will evolve into more dangerous variants as it spreads. For example, I saw uh, Dr. Marine Koopmans just tweeted, Another likely scenario is a massive wave in China spawning a range of new variants. I wonder if you can talk a little more about that possibility. Yes, I do think that uh, possibility is high. Uh, I'm, not, I'm an epidemiologist looking at a population, not a virologist. Although I, uh, if we look at US CDC's uh, statistics about the variants, this, uh, uh, the uh, COVID-19, uh, this virus, uh, really causing uh, the, the the generation is uh, turn turnaround is very very fast. Now every uh, couple of weeks we have a new variants and they are uh, competing with the old variants and finding the the fittest one. Mm-hmm. I I haven't seen this, uh, that speed has slowing down. Uh, so I think the same thing will happen in China once the uh, large epidemic is uh, in the process. Uh, so the key to that is really the monitoring. Uh, China has the ability uh, to do the genetic testing for the, the new variants. So And it can uh, share with the world. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think the best defense would be uh, for China to keep vigilant and for the world to encourage China to communicate for communications. Fantastic. Um, finally, when it comes down to normal people, what should Chinese people do to better protect themselves and their family members? I think uh, based on the model uh, and all the uh, factor we have seen now, uh, it's the, the biggest challenge is the healthcare system uh, crash. So it, uh, some of the models showing that maybe within 30 to 40 days uh, that the, it will reach the limit of the healthcare system, especially the ICU units. And it's not that easy, that quick to build up the ICU. Mm-hmm. So it's really about how to create the look at the limited sources, resources, and applying to the most significant uh, way to reduce mortality and reduce the disease burden. So I think for everyday, for citizens, uh, it's really about uh, understanding what is COVID um, symptoms and to try to educate themselves about when to, uh, uh, to contact hospital and um, especially pro- um, to uh, protect those vulnerable. That means those who have uh, chronic diseases, <clears throat> obese, and also for those um, who um, also uh, in the elders age group. So separating the uh, people by age group uh, within a household probably is uh, important. And otherwise, you know, using other MPIs can reduce, uh, to, can postpone uh, some of the the, 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 the hike, uh, the spike of the infection. Yeah, Great, that's super helpful. Another uh, piece <laughs> of con- controversial uh, policy initiatives um, rolled out by the Chinese government is this uh, dependence on Chinese traditional medicine, Lianhua Qingwen. Can you talk a little bit about sort of the, the effectiveness of those medicines relative to, say, you know, um, cold remedies we use in the United States, say Tylenol. Um, what's the best evidence on that front? Well, Tylenol is really just to reduce fever and reduce uh, the symptoms. Uh, it's not antiviral. Uh, in, in U.S., the most effective antiviral medicine are Paxlovid uh, and Malnuf severe and even some of the other uh, earlier used uh, antiviral can be effective. So that's actually another way, you know, to reduce the, the mortality is to use the antiviral as early as possible. Uh, I know Paxlovid is patented in in, the, in China, but I haven't seen wide use of it. Uh, so that's also a concern. Uh, I don't know about uh, the effectiveness of the Lianhua Qingwen because I it's uh, you know I haven't seen a good clinical trial uh, data mm-hmm. on that, so it's hard to hard to comment.